Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pathways to Happiness podcast. My name is Nina Levon, and today we are going to be talking about how to feel better when you are genuinely having a bad day, how we end up making a bad day worse, and how to have less bad days altogether. I hope you guys are staying warm. I am freezing. I am sitting here with my tea, trying to stay warm. I grew up in New England, but I actually spent 20 years of my adult life in Florida, and I've only been living outside of Florida for a few years, and I just have not gotten adjusted at all. I am always so cold, and I really, really love the winter. I love snow. I love how it looks. I think it's so beautiful and enchanting. But I think my body definitely thinks that I am still in Florida because I cannot get warmed up. So I hope you guys are warm and cozy where you are. I'm going to continue to drink my tea. I'm really, really excited about this topic because the other day I just had the worst day and I was just in the worst mood and I had to remind myself of all the things that we're going to talk about today. So it's a great topic to bring up and I think it's one that we can all relate to because it doesn't matter how positive you are, how much you always try to look on the bright side. Bad days definitely happen. So this podcast really applies to everyone. We all have bad days where we just feel like nothing is going right, that we're a bad person or a bad employee, a bad spouse, a bad friend or a bad parent, or something really embarrassing or disappointing happened, or there was just a whole pile of really annoying things that kept getting thrown our way. And eventually it just gets to the tipping point. And when we have a day like that, usually there is something that we habitually do that we think is going to make it better. And it's something that we always do whenever we're feeling bad. So it's like eating a whole box of macaroni and cheese or allowing ourselves to not do something that's actually really important that we get done right now. Or sometimes, sadly, we lash out at other people or we say things we don't mean or we use a tone that makes someone else upset. And we just kind of generally do things that are out of character. So we try to comfort ourselves or let go of our emotions by doing something that a lot of the time makes us feel a lot worse for other reasons or makes us feel ashamed or upset. And then it just contributes to the downward spiral. And that's just the external stuff. Internally, we do not help ourselves out either a lot of times. We tell ourselves that we are a failure or that we deserve this or that our lives are so annoying or miserable. And a lot of the time, that starts to make us really feel hopeless. We start to believe that this is it. This is how I'm going to be feeling forever. This is the type of life that I'm going to have. Because bad days really turn even the best of us into drama queens. And honestly, this isn't something that we should beat ourselves up for. This is human nature. And everyone is entitled to have a bad day every once in a while. But there are certainly things that we can do to make us feel better and that don't end up adding to our problems, which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Now, keep in mind, everybody is different. What works for one person might be incredibly annoying for someone else. So for example, when one person has a bad day, they may want to reach out to a friend or a relative and have a long conversation all about what happened. For me, this is my nightmare. This is definitely something that it's not going to make me feel better when I am annoyed or angry. I like to be alone. I am a self-soother and that method just doesn't work for me personally. Now, when I'm feeling other negative emotions like sadness and when I need encouragement, sometimes I do find that helpful. But the point here is that no two people are alike. So I'm going to give you some strategies that seem to be helpful or that really do work for most people. And then I'm going to also give you some specific strategies that work really well for some people and are just kind of a complete turnoff for others. So you can put those kind of in the maybe bin. Usually when we hear these things, we tend to feel passionately either way, especially if we are kind of a self-aware person. So I also want to share what not to do when we're having a bad day and how to also prevent bad days from happening altogether or 
at least make them as infrequent as possible. So hopefully after this podcast, you'll have a little toolkit that you can come back to when you are having a bad day and you just really want to feel better as soon as possible. So firstly, I just want to say that this is a weird time that we are all going through right now. So most people are pretty on edge. It is more likely that we are easily irritated or that we take things personally or that things seem annoying or overwhelming right now. And maybe these types of things wouldn't normally bother us, but there are just so many crazy things going on right now in the world. And every day it seems like something else happens and there's just a lot of emotions going on right now. And just know that we really aren't feeling like ourselves to begin with. We are not relaxed. We all have this negativity kind of coming at us all the time right now. So if you are having more bad days than usual, that's probably why. So we're going to start by talking about some simple things that we can do that really do tend to make people feel better. So the first thing is self-talk. So we have to acknowledge the feelings that we are having without judging ourselves. So after, you know, we come home, we've had this terrible day, we need to firstly pat ourselves on the back for getting through the day. And for most people, they also need to express themselves in some way. And there's going to be some variation on what makes someone feel comfortable in this regard. So as I mentioned before, some people really like to to call a friend or, you know, to talk face to face with someone and, and really kind of vent their their issues and express themselves and, and just have, you know, some sympathy for, you know, everything that has happened during that day. And other people, they really don't want people around them when they've had a bad day. But expressing ourselves is still important. And so we can do that in a journal. We can kind of talk it out with our own self. We can write it down, you know, whatever it is. But we do need to acknowledge our feelings and express ourselves in some way, shape, or fashion. That has to happen for every person or we're never going to be able to move on. We've got to kind of get it out a little bit. So we also have to really pinpoint what the problem is. So it's worse when it's vague. A lot of times we do know very specifically what happened. It's very, very obvious. And other times, and I think it's almost worse when this happens, it's just like all these things coming from different directions and it's just kind of like an overwhelming pile of different things. And we really need to kind of get to the bottom of what is bothering us the most or if it's just that we feel like we're taking on too many things or, you know, whatever it is. If we're upset because we're really behind on a project or someone said something that really hurt our feelings, we need to be clear to ourselves about what is really upsetting us and then offer ourselves comforting words that specifically deal with these issues. And don't be shy for myself. I like to talk out loud. I like to, especially when I am running in the morning, I like to really, you know, talk out loud to myself. Same thing when I am driving. It helps me work through my problems. And you can also, you know, use that time for affirmations to yourself. So again, don't be shy if you need to say these things out loud because I personally find that very helpful. Some people don't like that, but that is something that you shouldn't be shy about doing if you do find it to be helpful for you. Okay, the second thing, and this is really big for me personally, and that is to go out and get some fresh air. A lot of times it just makes us feel so much worse when we are just in the middle of this terrible day and, you know, we're just kind of feeling constricted to this small environment. I always find it to be so helpful if I can just get outside, breathe some fresh air and just, even if you do just breathing exercises, but you know, calming breath work is very helpful when you are so, you know, feeling so emotionally reactive and you feel like there are so many things going on. It just is so calming to just sit down and just breathe and relax a little bit. And again, I find it most helpful if I can do this out 
doors. Just take a little stroll around the neighborhood or whatever and just breathe and relax and just kind of calm yourself down and just get yourself into kind of a new mental and physiological state. And kind of going hand in hand with this is number three, which is exercise. Exercise just changes everything. And that's something that you don't think about wanting to do a lot of times when you're having a bad day. The last thing you want to do a lot of times is get out there and exercise unless you're a person that already knows that that is helpful for you. But truly, for most people, exercise is genuinely helpful. It gets your blood pumping. It gets your blood flowing. It totally puts you in a different state. It is a good way to get out aggression. There are so many positive things that can happen from exercising. And so even if it's something that normally you do not think that you enjoy or like, when you are having a bad day, it is a wonderful shift. Yeah, I think it's something that, you know, we should really be doing every day. It's a very positive thing in my own life. But when you're having a bad day, can't recommend it enough. Number four, indulge in healthy escapism. So this could be Netflix. It could be the obvious things that we do for escapism. But it could also be something that's productive that makes us feel good about ourselves. It could be gardening. It could be painting. It could be writing poetry or scrapbooking or playing with your pet, something that gets your mind off of your issues right now. And I did a whole video on escapism because I think it's very misunderstood. There is healthy escapism now. There are dangers to escapism, especially if we are overdoing it. We don't want, you know, what we are escaping to to become more important than our reality. But when we are having a bad day, Having healthy escapism can help us to kind of shift out of that very negative mindset into a flow state or a more relaxed state or just a, a moment in time where we are not feeling like we are totally surrounded by our problems. All right, moving on to number five, which is practice serious self-care. Now, what I mean by self-care is something that is genuinely restorative not something that makes you feel worse. So what do we normally do? We usually turn to something that is not truly, again, restorative. It's something that makes us maybe feel better in in the moment. But if that thing that's going to make you feel better in the moment ends up making you feel worse in the long run, that is not really self-care. That might be self-soothing at that moment, but we need to practice actual true self-care. So we want to, you know, even take a nap or practice meditation or something that is truly restorative, something that lets us know that we are important and that we are taking the time to take care of ourselves. And I have another video. I'm going to link that down below for any of you who are watching this podcast through YouTube. And for those of you who are listening to this podcast on another platform, you can just look it up. It's called The Five Facets of True Self-Care. So it just goes through all the different types of essential self-care that are genuinely helpful and very, very necessary. So hopefully that can give you some ideas of how you can best practice your own self-care. Okay, so the next one is another one that I'm really big on, and that is change your external environment. So you can go look at the ocean, you could go look at the stars, you could drive to a new coffee shop, you could just go somewhere completely new altogether, but you want to remind yourself that the world is bigger than your problems and you just want to see something new that is so inspiring and really gets your mind off of all the everyday things, all the things that are really consuming you right now. It's kind of like taking a little vacation, even if you are just going five minutes away. I really, truly find this strategy extremely helpful. Okay, the next thing I have is something that can feel difficult to practice in the moment. But if we can, you know, find it within ourselves to practice this, you're going to find that it is really, really something that can pull you out of your bad day or at least kind of 
pull you out of that mindset temporarily. And that is to practice gratitude for all the good things in your life. So when we're having a bad day, what are we focusing on? We're focusing on all the terrible things in our life and like attracts like we're going to start thinking about all the other things that we're really not happy about we're going to you know really dig in and we're going to think of all these things that we really genuinely feel miserable about so knowing that that is going to be what our natural reaction is probably going to want to be we can intentionally sit down and tell ourselves you know what no I'm not going to do that I am going to sit down and I'm going to think about all the things that I am grateful for because yes, today was an absolutely terrible day and all these different terrible things happened to me. But if I think about it, there are still tons and tons and tons of things in my life that I can be grateful for. It could be our health. It could be our relationship. It could be our job. It could be the fact that we have shelter or that, you know, our family members are safe or, you know, that we have this wonderful pet, you know, whatever it is. There are so many things in our life that we take for granted a lot of times because we're so focused on the negative things. But if we really look into it, there are so many things that we would be devastated if they were taken away from us. So we have to, you know, really look at that and say, well, these things must really be precious to me. And, you know, when we focus on the things that we are grateful for, and those are the types of things that start to expand in our mind and start to expand in our life. So when we are focusing on the negative, of course, the negative things are going to seem to expand. So we can literally sit down and make a list of all the things that we are grateful for, or we can say them aloud. Or if you have a gratitude journal, you can certainly write in your gratitude journal. And again, I know on those bad days, you don't feel like doing that because you know, you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about all the terrible things that happened to you and you have the right to do that. But when we can shift that focus, it does tend to make us feel a lot better. Okay, the next one is a lot more simple, and that is simply to take a shower or a bath, or if you have a swimming pool to go swimming, there's just something about just, you know, cleansing yourself of the day that is, again, really restorative, that is very helpful, and a lot of times that can just shift our mindset really, really quickly. So that's a simple thing that you can do that might make you feel better in that moment. Same with the next suggestion, which is yoga or meditation. So again, I know a lot of times when we are having that bad day, we are kind of, you know, resisting that. But if we can just sit down and do something quiet, something peaceful, something that pulls us inward, we can really start to feel a lot better, a lot more quickly. So I like yoga and I like meditation. Both are things that I try to do every single day, but definitely when you have a bad day, either or both of those things will make you feel better. Number 10 is something else that is simple, but it's something that we really have to do. And that is to remind ourselves that this is just one day. When we are having all these negative emotions, it just makes us feel like our whole life is ruined, that our life is terrible. And we can't see past our problems a lot of times. It just creates a wall in front of us. And it's just all we can think about. It's all we can focus on. It's all that we can see. But if we, you know, backtrack in our mind a little bit, we can think about the fact that we have gotten through every single thing ever in our life that has ever been thrown in our way. And maybe this really is the absolute worst thing that you have ever been through. It's unlikely, but it's possible. But you want to think about all those other things that you thought at that time were the worst things that you have ever gone through at that moment. And you got through them because you're here right now. So it's just proof that with time, we get through every single thing that gets placed in our way. We are way more resilient than we give ourselves credit for. And sometimes we just literally need to tell ourselves, hey, this is just one thing. This is just one problem or one group of problems if you had a whole bunch of things happen at the same time. It just feels really bad right now. But am I going to get through this? Yes, I get through everything. That's what you need to tell yourself. This is just one day. 
one moment in time. And before you know it, no matter what has happened, it will be a new moment in time. Okay, I love the next suggestion. This is something that I also do, and that is simply to listen to music. And a lot of times we don't just sit and listen to music. We are listening to music, but we're also doing dishes or we're doing a thousand things at the same time. We're playing on our phone. We're watching TV at the same time. But if we just sit down or put on earbuds and just focus on music and just kind of become part of the music, it just can transport us to somewhere else. It has the power to truly change our emotions. It can uplift us. It can comfort for it us. And it's something that we don't do on its own enough. And it is, music is a treasure. It is something that we really take for granted a lot of times. So this is something that I've started to do recently because I was guilty of that too. I would listen to music, but I, I was only listening to music when I was doing thousands of other things. So I wasn't really giving it the focus. But when you can really pull your focus into a piece of music, whatever music you like, it really doesn't matter but you can just get, again, transported. It does something to you emotionally. So if you're someone who hasn't been connecting to music in this way for a long time, give it a try. Think about songs that you used to love or, you know, experiment with, with new music. For me, I tend to like music that I know that I like and just I know is going to make me feel better. So I have those specific songs that definitely get me in a better mood. So that's what I tend to turn to. But it, again, doesn't really matter as long as you are sitting down and just taking that time to really focus on it and just kind of let yourself relax and just kind of get pulled into the music. The next one is really effective, and that is to snuggle an animal or to go and get a hug or give a hug. Sometimes we really do need that physical touch and we just need that comfort and maybe we're not ready to talk about it. Maybe we don't want advice. A lot of times we don't want to hear anyone else's opinions right now. We just want that simple hug, that feeling that someone else or, you know, some other furry animal, whatever it is, is is there for us and that we, we have someone that we can turn to even if we're not ready to share our problems, even if we're, you know, just needing that support with no words said, giving a hug or cuddling an animal, like I said, is something that we can do that really does make us feel better very, very quickly. And the last thing and this definitely does make us feel better, but it may not be something that we're ready to do in the moment. It depends on your personality type and it depends on the situation. But what we can do is brainstorm solutions that make the situation that we are in better. So this is really troubleshooting. This is being able to objectively look at the things that are going on in our life that are so upsetting to us, the things that contributed to the bad day, and, you know, thinking of things that we can do to make it better. Now, maybe your bad day had nothing to do with circumstances that you could control. So maybe this is not going to be effective for you because it's, this was just some random thing that nothing could have prevented or nothing really will make better. However, there are probably several things going on in your life that are bothering you that you could do things to improve and you could do things concerning it that would make you feel less upset or less stressed out. So if that is the case and you feel ready to do so, you can brainstorm ideas and implement those ideas. Sometimes people need time before they are able to do this. And other people find it extremely helpful because they just want to fix the problem as soon as possible. So they just want to brainstorm so that this doesn't happen again. So again, you're just working with your personality type and the, the specific situation. But this is something that is effective when you are able to do it if it does apply. So these are all the things that tend to work for most people. Now I'm going to offer you some other ideas, three specific ideas that work really, really well for some people and really do nothing for others or make them feel even worse. So you can see if these strategies sound helpful to you or not. So the first thing is 
that we can take action on something we've been procrastinating on or do one thing that makes us realize that we are in control of our life. For some people, when their day seems like a failure, if they're feeling really down on themselves, if they do something to make them feel like they're successful in some way, even if it's really, really small, it makes them feel better. So you could make that dreaded phone call or you could fix that leaky faucet, whatever it is. But if you take something that maybe you've been putting off or something that you really didn't feel like doing, if you could actually accomplish something like that, for a lot of people, it really does make them feel better. It makes them feel in control and it makes them remember that, you know, they can do something that is positive. And, you know, when we do this, if this is a strategy that is helpful to you, it really also gets our mind off of our problems. It gets us thinking about, you know, whatever it is we are working on. So that's a strategy that I find, you know, does help a lot of people. Again, you got to work with your personality type and what you know is going to make you feel better. A lot of people, the last thing they want to do is actually add something to their plate. So they definitely, the don't want to be fixing a leaky faucet when they're having a bad day. But I know plenty of people that, you know, they want to go in their shed and they want to build something, you know, something productive that gets their mind off it and also makes them feel like they are doing something good. So could be helpful, only you know. Okay, so the next thing I have is to clean your room or your house or organize. Now, for most of my life, I was probably the most disorganized person on earth. This strategy would have sounded horrible to me. But recently, I have found that this strategy is one of the most helpful strategies of all. Not only when I'm having a bad day, when I am just feeling overwhelmed, when I have so much work to do that I feel like I can't take a step forward. I don't know if you get like that too, where you just feel paralyzed, where you just don't even know where to start. Sometimes if I clean my room or clean the whole house or clean my car or something, it just kind of clears my entire mind. I feel like it's just this mental reset where I feel like I have this nice clean space to think. And also, you know, outer order really does contribute to inner calm. So there is that aspect of being able to look out to a clean house and it can make you feel a lot better about your day and a lot better about your life. So this is something very specific that I do think is really, really helpful. And again, this is coming from someone that does not enjoy cleaning and was never really that organized as a person. This is something that I continuously work on. But this strategy, I just did it two days ago. This is what I did when I was having my bad day. I just when and I cleaned my room and then I just went and I extended it to the house and ultimately I felt a lot better. So this is something that you can try as well. And again, some people, this is the last thing they want to do because when they are having a bad day, they really want to do nothing but relax. So try this out. Let me know what you think about this one. And the third thing is to change up your routine in some way. Just do something fresh, something to remind you that life is still interesting, still inspiring, and that there are things that exist, again, that aren't part of your current problems. So some people do prefer being in their comfort nest when they are not feeling their best. So this can work or it could work against you if you are someone that that's going to actually feel like is going to add more overwhelm to you. But this is something that, again, I do find helpful. I like to just, again, get out of the house. I like to do something new. I need to just remind myself that the world is still a cool place. There are great things to do, even though this particular day was just really awful. So anyway, we can change up our routine. We're going to be inspired. Anytime in life, really, that we get out of our comfort zone, it really does lead to a positive, like 99.99999% of the time. So that's something that we can do as well. So those are all the things that will definitely help and then will potentially help. But now I kind of wanted to shift gears a little bit because I wanted to talk about what not to do or more specifically, how we tend to make a bad day worse. 
So I think the first thing we can all identify with, and that is that we do or say something that we regret. So we do something big, maybe like we quit our job or we end a relationship, or I mean, it could be small. It could be that we break our diet, but all of these things can make us feel really terrible about ourselves, maybe in the moment, but definitely later down the road. So not only do we have this bad day, we end up having something that we really feel guilty about. So that is something that we want to try to avoid. And the next thing is kind of similar, and that is that we break a promise to ourself. And that is, you know, going hand in hand with doing something that we will regret. But let's say that we promised ourselves that, you know, we are going to practice yoga every day, or that we were going to check in on our grandmother every day. And we don't do that because, you know, we're having this bad day. In the end, if we choose to break that promise to ourselves, if it really is a promise, not something that we wish we would do, but something that we have truly promised to ourselves that we are going to do on a daily basis or on a regular basis, if we break that promise to ourselves, that tends to also lead to a lot of negative emotions or even that guilt, just like when we are doing something or saying something that we regret. So we want to be careful not to break any promises that we are making to ourselves. The third thing is that we soothe ourselves with something that makes us feel bad about ourselves. So this is something we kind of touched on earlier, but we just want to make sure that the things that we are trying to do to make ourselves feel better, again, ultimately don't make us feel worse. So again, if we quit smoking and we light up a cigarette, or if we struggle with alcoholism and we take that drink, and it doesn't even have to be examples that are that extreme. We just want to be careful that the things that we are doing to really get us out of this bad mood aren't things that are bad for us in general. So it could be something as small as gossiping. You know, that's something that, you know, when you're having a bad day, maybe you're going to say unkind things about someone or, or judge someone, but ultimately that does make you feel bad about yourself. So you want to make sure that the things that you are doing to try to make yourself feel better are genuinely going to make you feel better and not cause further problems for yourself. Another thing that we tend to do that can really exaggerate the problem or expand the problem is to continuously bring it up and ruminate about it. Now, again, we are human beings, and especially if something that is fresh and new and just happened, it's really hard not to think about it. And I'm certainly not saying we shouldn't think about it. We should, of course, address our problems. We should face all our problems. But once we have done that, we don't need to continuously bring it up, even if it is, you know, just those annoying things that happened. Every time we bring up that, you know, that rude waiter or, you know, the, the thing that the person said to us at work, every time we bring that up again, we are adding energy to it. We are making it more and more important. So again, face your problems, deal with your problems. You don't want to push them away, but once they are out in the open, if possible, don't complain about them again and again. Don't continuously bring them up because you are really expanding it the more you talk about it. There are millions of other things that you could be focusing on that would actually make you happy. So you have to, again, choose what your focus is going to be on. Is your focus going to be on all those irritating things that are really overwhelming you and bringing you down? Or is your focus going to be on the positive things in your life and finding ways to make yourself feel better or at least help you, you know, get the ball rolling to try to feel better? So only we can choose our focus. So the less we can ruminate over this, the better we are going to feel. And lastly, how to make a bad day worse is to try to be a superhero and to try to do things that we couldn't even do on a normal day. So my suggestion here is if it is not necessary to take it off the list, unless you are one of those people that actually makes them feel better to do a bunch of things that makes them feel accomplished, makes them feel productive. If that is you, by all means, put as many things on the list as, as you want. But for most people, you know, 
having all these things that you need to get accomplished, if they are not that important, right now the important thing needs to be making yourself feel better. So if there is anything that you could put off to a different day till you are feeling better, I would go ahead and do that if it is not necessary that it happens at this moment. Because when you do something and you're not feeling your best, you're never going to be happy with what it is you are doing anyway. So again, that is going to be different if you are that personality type that likes to do the opposite, which can sometimes happen. So lastly, how do we prevent bad days. Now, realistically, we can't predict what's going to happen in the world, and therefore, we cannot necessarily prevent every single bad day. Now, of course, we can really control our reaction to situations, but we are not robots. So there are going to be things that make us feel emotionally reactive. There are going to be things sometimes that we do find upsetting. However, we have a lot of control over how we think and how we feel, and there are many different ways that we can try to prevent bad days. And the first thing that we can do is to make sure that we are always checking in with ourselves, that we never allow ourselves to get so busy that we are not paying attention to how we are feeling and that we are not paying attention to the different warning signs that our body gives us. So if our body is giving us a warning sign, we need to kind of stop everything and take a step back and see what is going on for ourselves. So that is the first thing we need to always, you know, just keep in check with ourselves, keep in check with our mental health and schedule time for it. That's something that if we don't have as part of our routine, a lot of times it doesn't happen because it's something that, you know, we don't think of as that important a lot of times, but it could not be more important. So we have to remember to have that five, 10 minute check at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day and see if there's anything bothering us or if there's anything that needs to be addressed because the those are definitely things that we want to take seriously and when we try to push them away or if we just don't catch it, if we ignore it because we're thinking about other things, in the end, these things tend to really, really affect us. The second thing that we need to do is to question our reactions and see what's really going on. So a lot of times, you know, something will happen and our reaction is kind of extreme and we have to, you know, again, step back when that happens as well because we have to say, whoa, why am I feeling like this? Why did I have such a, a strong reaction to this? Because most of the time that means there is there's something going on beneath the surface. There's something that we haven't addressed there either. So if a person is really making us very angry or, you know, we're just having all these negative feelings, we need, really need to figure out why. And so a lot of that is just coming down to becoming more self-aware and spending enough time in introspection. Again, same thing. We don't make time for it a lot of times, but it is so important. So we definitely want to make sure that whenever we see a reaction or we feel a reaction, you know, that we are really getting to the bottom of why we reacted that way. There's a reason why we reacted that way. Even if it makes us uncomfortable to think about, it's definitely something that we want to look into and something that we want to face head on before it becomes a much bigger problem. The next thing, and this one I think is really, really important, is don't set yourself up for failure. So, don't go into the meeting unprepared if you're not a person that likes to wing it. Don't schedule that coffee date with a friend that you secretly find really irritating. We need to stop putting ourselves in situations that are preventable and have proved time and time again to be upsetting to us. So we want to think of all the different ways that we do set ourselves up for failure. And a lot of these things could be easily correctable. So if, you know, we don't want to go into that meeting unprepared, let's, you know, take the time to to get organized, to collect our thoughts, to, you know, read all the memos. It probably only takes five, 10 minutes to do all this a lot of the times, but sometimes we, we don't do that and we really are setting ourselves up for failure, which sets us up for having more and more bad days. So anything that we can do to set ourselves up for success is going to be helpful. And a lot of times, again, that just comes down to sitting down and seeing what can I do to help myself out? 
a lot of times solutions can take like five minutes, yet we don't do them because we didn't think of them. So that's something that we can do as well. Another thing that is really important is to practice stress management. Again, there is no way we can eliminate all stress from our life. We can try to reduce it as much as possible, but we also have to make sure that we are managing our stress. And for every person, there are different techniques that we can use, but I mean, we want to make sure that we're eating right. We want to make sure that we are sleeping, that we are expressing ourselves, that we are journaling, that we are meditating and doing all the types of things that we know for us do make us feel better. And maybe those things don't really ring a bell for you, but we need to know what does help us reduce and manage stress in our own life. And these are things that have to be very important. They need to be central parts of our life because nothing in our life really seems to work well when we are completely stressed out. It's just a very negative emotional state to be in. So if we have strategies that we know really do help us out, we want to make them a priority for sure. Another thing is to make sure that we have enough time alone. Most people do need moments of calm and quiet, even if you're an extrovert, even if you really are a people person. You do need time alone. You need time with your own thoughts so you can have this introspection. And again, you can combine that with some of the other things that we talked about, like the meditation, like the, the yoga, like the time and reflection. Whatever that means for you, you know, it could be walking in the woods. It could be going on a run in the morning. It could be just taking that bath, but every person needs a calm, peaceful moment in their day. And I know a lot of times for parents, that is time that is very hard to find, but even if it means that you need to get up early, even if it means that, you know, you ask someone to watch the children for even 15 minutes, just so you can collect your thoughts. But that is a very important part of your day. And that just helps you to check in with yourself so that, again, you can prevent these bad days from happening because you know what's going on with yourself and you can have time to kind of work yourself through them. And another thing that we need to think about is making sure that our life is balanced. If we are ignoring important aspects of our life because we are too focused in other areas, that is another thing that often contributes to having bad days. If our work is just completely consuming us or our relationship is just completely consuming us, that means that we are ignoring other important things. And that's not going to work out in the long run. So anything that that we can do to add balance to our life. And I know that in some situations, there are times that temporarily our life is not in balance and there's really nothing that we can do about it in that moment. But we want to make sure that overall, there is balance in our life. There has to be time for fun. There has to be time for sleep. There has to be time for friends. There has to be time for introspection. So we want to make sure that all the important elements of our life are present and that nothing is getting ignored or, pu or pushed out completely. Another thing that we want to practice is saying something before things get out of control. So if our bad day had a lot to do with us kind of exploding or problems that have been building for a while that maybe we could have done something about, but we kept our mouth shut. We need to learn to be a little bit more assertive. And when things are starting to bother us, it's easier to approach the situation then as opposed to waiting for it to get out of control. So if there's something that you can do when you see a pattern start to emerge that you don't like, or you start to see someone acting in a certain way. It's probably better if you kind of nip that in the bud now than wait until, again, it's too far progressed and it is too problematic and too big a lot of times. Once it gets too big, sometimes, you know, you feel like there's really nothing you could do about it at that point. So do something before things get out of control. And lastly, just, again, going kind of back to that first point, when we see those warning signs step back and see what we can do. Take it seriously. If there, there are things that are bothering you, that are annoying you, that are starting to cause you to 
feel overwhelmed, that are making things feel out of control. Again, just like we said about the last point, it's easier when these things are just starting to emerge as opposed to once they snowball into these overwhelmingly huge mountains that we feel that we can no longer climb. So when we see the warning signs, when we are just having those negative emotions, we definitely want to take it seriously so we can see that, you know, what we can do and how we can effectively, you know, make the situation a little bit better, how we can solve problems and, you know, how we can kind of reverse the situation and make it ultimately more positive for us. So those are some of the things that we can do to prevent bad days from happening. So if there are any other strategies that you can think of that I missed, please definitely let me know in the comments. And please do not beat yourself up if you are having a bad day. Like I said, we are in, you know, an incredibly unusual situation right now. And there are just so many layers of different things happening. And on top of everything happening in the world, of course, you have all these stressful things that are happening in your own life, in your own relationships, in your own career, you know, just in your own life in general. So please be patient with yourself. Offer yourself so much self-love, self-understanding, self-forgiveness if you feel like you contributed to that bad day. No problem. You are human. Just remember that tomorrow is a brand new day. So I truly hope that these strategies are helpful for you. I look forward to hearing, you know, what you do find the most helpful and, you know, the things that you are going to implement in your own life. As always, I thank you so much for spending time with me today. It's always such a pleasure talking to you and I greatly look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great one, guys.